In the game Half-Life 2, early in the game, there's a playground. And in this playground, there is a merry-go-round, which in Britain is called a roundabout, which is a child's toy, circular like this. We're looking from the top down, and it's got a pivot right here, and it just rotates around in this direction. And they put that in the game because they, this Half-Life 2 is one of the first games to have a robust physics simulation, a lifelike physics simulation. And it uh, really hadn't been seen that much before in some games, but not as big as Half-Life 2. And so they put this playground in there so that you, so that you as the player could mess around and play with stuff and, and, and see the new physics simulation technology that they had developed in action. And we're going to work out right here, right now, the math to uh, figure out how they did that. And so, and we're not. We're going to look at not only the round, the roundabout, or the merry-go-round, whatever you want to call it, but also we're going to see what happens if you put a little box on that merry-go-round. How do you describe its motion in mathematical terms? So we're going to have two two matrices representing the transformation of the merry-go-round. That'll be M, our favorite matrix letter, and then the box will have a matrix B and then we'll be trying to get a new matrix B prime that represents the box after the merry-go-round has spun a little bit and an M prime which represents the, the merry-go-round after the merry-go-round has spun a little bit and notice that we want the merry-go-round to spin in place not around the origin if we just let's say S let's say S is the matrix that will spin our merry-go-round if we just say SM, then we're going to get a rotation like this. That is not what we want, so SM is wrong. Okay, so let's get to it. We, since we want to spin around the origin, here's the trick we're going to use. We're going to take M, okay, and we're going to translate it to the origin first. Now remember that N can be broken up into T and R a translation and a rotation. You rotate it and translate it and you get it to where it is. So this T, it's the opposite of it that we want. This T translated the merry-go-round to where it is. So we want T inverse, T inverse. And that will translate the merry-go-round back to the origin and then we'll spin it and then we'll translate it back to where it was originally. Now if I expand this M over here, you'll see T, S, T inverse, and I expand the M and I get this original TR. And you'll see that these two translation matrices, yoink, they cancel out. And you're left with just T, S, R, where T is the translation of the merry-go-round, R is the original rotation, and S is how much we want to spin it by, and that's it. That's how easy it is. Now let's look at B, the box, the box B. It's like a toy box that's sitting in the merry-go-round as we spin it. And we want to see its motion going around in a circle like so. We do not want to see it going around the origin like this. We want to see it going around the merry-go-round. So we have to first transform it into the merry-go-round's local space. And I'm going to draw the merry-go-round's local space here. This is like the global space of the entire game or simulation. And this is the local space of only the merry-go-round. And in the local space, the merry-go-round is sitting here at the origin. And the box is sitting right there. You see how the box is sitting just up into the right of, of the center of the merry-go-round and here because the center of the merry-go-round is the origin of the local coordinates. Now, if we rotate the box using the matrix S, it will go around the origin of the local space, which is also the center of the merry-go-round, so that's what we want. So we're going to take B, we're going to take B, and then we have to translate it. We have to use a matrix that will get us from here to here. And that matrix, as we've learned already, is M inverse, is the inverse of the merry-go-round matrix. So we're just going to M inverse right there. And now we can spin. And then when we're done spinning, we've got to put the box back where it was. And so we multiply by M. That's it, folks.
these two formulas. Very simple. Let's go to the code and see it in action. So I've gone ahead and made a merry-go-round merry object and a toy box object. And I made a matrix that will represent the spin. And so we just, we're setting the rotation of that matrix to be some value spun around the up vector. The 0, 1, 0 is the um, up vector. And so dt times 50, that just means we're going 50 degrees per second. And then I'm grabbing the t matrix and the r matrix of the merry-go-round. So we have all the tools we need. Let's get started. Let's see, it was for the merry-go-round, it was the translation times the spin times the, what was it? Times the rotation. And for the toy box, it was, we have to grab the merry-go-round transform times the spin times the merry-go-round, can't type today, transform inverse. Let's go to a new line so you guys can see. And then times the original transform. And then we load those two transforms into the original object. So wow, that was kind of straightforward. A lot of matrix multiplication, but if you are strong with your matrix math, then you can do this stuff easily. And look at that, our merry-go-round is a square merry-go-round because we have not learned yet how to make circles. But that's okay because it spins normally, it spins perfectly. And you can see the box is spinning relative to the merry-go-round and not relative to the world. Same thing with the merry-go-round itself. So cool, we're gonna be exploring this concept in the next few videos. We're gonna be doing stuff like what happens when you jump on the merry-go-round? Right now, nothing happens, but we're gonna figure out how to get the player spinning around with the merry-go-round. All that and more in the next few Math for Game Developers series. See you then.